This is a solution to problem one. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, we, we have a data set. Problem one is to read it into R and run some um, descriptive statistics. All right, so um, let me just show you where this file is located. So if you go to uh, ECM and teach, and then 423 homework, there is a file out here called default small. So that, that's, um, that's what I need to bring in. So I'm going to call this uh, data set default. So then I'm going to create a brand new object called default. And we're going to use read.csv to bring it in. The reason I use read.csv is, is because it's a comma delimited file. So that file was in users, ECM, teach, 423, homework, and then default, small.csv. I think that was the name of it. All right, now uh, let, let's go look at what I had to do here. So run descriptives on all the variables and examine the min and max and make sure they're reasonable. So the easiest way to do this is to use summary default. And you want to um, just get in the habit of running summary whenever you bring in a data object to make sure you did it right. We're not going to do anything with the date in, in this assignment. Um, okay, let's look at the min and the maxes as we were instructed. So price... Uh, has a minimum of zero. That makes total sense. The maximum should bother you. So $9,000 for a health three-year health club membership is a little bit excessive. Um, that matches the down payment. So it's, again, excessive, but um, at least the two match up. Okay, payment type is one through five. I think that's right. Use zero through um, eight, but then you got a bunch of NA. So NA is um, missing. Uh, age ranges from 0 to 99. Okay, well, at least the ages are um, all non-negative. Uh, th those zeros are going to bother us because this is a health club membership for adults and you really can't have zero-year-olds joining it. Um, but it looks like a fairly small percentage that, that have those values, you know, given the value of the, the first quartile. Okay, gender is 1 and 2, and the default is 0 and 1. All right, so good. Um, how do we get the number of cases? One way to do that is just get the dimension of default. All right, so this tells us we have 24,975 rows and nine columns. Let's move on to part two. So print the variable names and run basic descriptives. Oh, well, I guess we've already run the basic descriptives. To get the variable names, you can use names. Um, so how do you spell? I can't spell default this morning. All right, so there, there you have your, um, your, your variable names. So names is another really useful function to know about. Um, moving on, enter the variable names for payment type. And I've actually given you the code. So if, you're, um, if, if you don't want to type, I think I can just copy this over and see what happens. All right, so what, what I'm going to do is overwrite payment type with a new variable that's a factor. Now, where's factor going get, to get its data? Well, it's going to get it from payment type. It's going to have these levels, and here are the labels of it. Now, uh, what else do we have to do? Run a frequency distribution, now a payment type. So to get a frequency distribution, we, we type table, default dollar payment type, and you'll see that these variable labels have been entered in for us. The gender variable equals one for males and two for females. Assign labels and submit a frequency distribution. So let's do the same thing. Default dollar, let's do gender, is equal to, we're going to make this a factor. And where will, we get, where will we get the data? Well, it's going to be default dollar gender. The levels are going to be one and two. So the 1 colon 2 specifies the range, 1, then 2. I could have also said C, 1, comma 2. That would also work. And then, um, let's see, we need to specify the labels. And so I'm going to make that into a vector. So C specifies a vector. And the first value is males, and the second value is females. Um, I suppose I could have made that male and female. Um, doesn't matter. Table default dollar a gender, and you'll see we now have uh, twelve thousand some males and twelve thousand some females. Let's move on. Part five. Consider the age variable. Generate a histogram and a frequency distribution. 
submit the uh, histogram and a written description of the shape. Well, let's start with um, with the histogram. To make a histogram, just do a hist, and it's going to be default dollar age. And so what you'll see is that um, there's a whole lot of um, values down here that don't make sense. Um, these n these values up here around 100 don't make sense either. So I'm not saying a 100-year-old can't belong to the fitness club, but what's odd is that you know the next highest person is 79. Why do you have all those 100-year-olds or 99-year-olds and nobody in between? Let's go get a table of this. Uh, default dollar age. And so here it really clearly shows up where you have these 26 values and 99 uh, and nothing from 79 up there. So I think those 99s are bad. Um, this is a club for adults. I don't care necessarily where you cut it off being an adult, whether it's 16 or 18. Um, th these values probably look reasonably, reasonable to me. They, they, they kind of taper off. You could even go as low as 13, I suppose. Uh, but you definitely don't want these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and probably the 9-year-old either in there. So I'm going to shrink this so we can see everything at once. Put this over here. All right, so make a list of features that don't make sense. The features that don't make sense are the, um, you know, the under 13-year-olds or under 16-year-olds and the 99-year-olds in this database. Set all the cases that you consider to be nonsensical um, to missing. All right, so let's um, let's go do that. And I gave you a hint. So we'll make default dollar age two equal default dollar age. Creates a uh, an exact copy. Now we're going to take default dollar age two, and we're going to specify um, values that we don't want. So let's do default dollar age two less than, I don't know, 16, or, and I think uh, pipe sign is, is or, um, default dollar age two greater than 90 equals NA. Now let's go rerun the histogram. So hist default dollar age two. And this thing looks more reasonable. All those 99s are gone, are, as are the, um, the, the small values. I just did an up arrow to bring that previous command back. Um, and I'm going to make a table now. And this looks exactly like what I want. So good. Uh, generate a histogram of down payment and describe its shape. So let's bring up this. And what was it? Down P P PMT. Uh, if you don't remember, you can just go back up. I'm scrolling up here. And so down payment is right here. So that's the name of the variable. If I hit enter, and what you'll see is uh, something horribly right skewed. So the answer is horribly right skewed. Based on your shape of the um, of down payment, uh, do you expect the mean to be greater than, less than, or equal to the median? All right, well, you have to remember that um, medians are pretty robust to outliers, okay, whereas a single large value can inflate the mean as much as you want. So if you make one value in the, in the entire data set um, sufficiently large, you can have the mean be as large as you want. So I would expect the mean to be <clears throat> greater than the median. And if we do a summary of default dollar down payment, Got to spell it right. Uh, we'll see that, sure enough, that's the case. The mean's about 199, the median is 100. So the mean is getting pulled out due to those outliers. So we found the mean and the median. Now we need the 5% trim mean. Um, if you don't know how to do a trimmed mean, I said do a question mark mean. This gets you some help. And let's go take a look at this. There's an option here for trimming. So the default is to trim 0% of the cases from each tail. Let's go back, and if I say mean, actually, I'm, I'm going to be a very lazy typist at this point, and we're going to bring back um, this command, and I'll just go edit it. If I say mean, and then if I enter an option here, trim equals 0.05, what that does is R is going to drop 
5% of the cases from the tails and then compute the mean of the stuff in the middle. So the trim mean is about 146. The trim mean is kind of a halfway house between the mean and the median. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in between those. If you think about it, a 0% trimmed mean is the normal mean. Um, a 49.99% trimmed mean trims, you know, ha you know, almost half of the data from each side and you're left with just the median. So this is kind of a sliding scale between the mean and the median. Let's move on to part 10. Generate a frequency distribution of down payment and sort the, uh, the, the and sort in descending orders of, of counts. So which down payments are most common? And I've given you the command uh, here, so let's just do that. I'm going to assign a new, um, create a new object A that will be a table of default dollar down payment. The reason I'm doing this is um, there's a whole lot of unique values and it's going to really fill up the output if I just sent it to the screen. In fact, if you wanted to know how long that result is, if you just type length of A, you'll see there are about 1400 unique down payments. Alright, so let's go find the, um, uh, you know, we'll sort this in, in descending order. So if we type sort A decreasing equals true. Now this is going to sort the down payments from largest to smallest. Um, decreasing means, you know, go largest to smallest. Now I don't want to print all of them, so I'll just print 1 through 20, the first 20, and it shows you know, just what the, what we, um, well, it shows that the most common down payment was $100, then followed by 150 then 50 it's showing us that people tend to round the down payments. Now, this 19 is interesting. Why 19? There's probably a promotion around $19 down. Question 11. Compute the base 10 logarithm of down payment, generate a histogram, and, and describe its shape. So I could either create another uh, part of this object that's the base 10 logarithm, or I could just, um, you know, pass it off to histogram uh, directly. So I'm going to just pass it off to histogram rather than using this, the storage space. So we will type, let's go back and get that exact command, um, log default dollar down payment and then we'll say base equals 10. I should probably add 1 to this to avoid taking the logarithm of 0. So R doesn't um, like to take logarithms of, um, of 0. So what you'll see is that it's now been symmetrized at least and is, is vaguely normal. This, this spike at 2, of course remember 2 squared is 100. That's all those $100 down values. Now R has selected the number of bars, and it's done a decent job of that, but we can um, we can try it with a different number of bars. So breaks equals 50, and so now what you'll see are a lot more spikes. This spike is probably $150 down, this spike is probably $50 down, and then uh, this must be $20 down or $19 down, somewhere in there. And so you see a lot more um, gradation if you have uh, 50 bars instead of whatever R gave us before. Moving on, what percentage of people have use equal to zero? So how can we find the percent who have use equal to zero? If we do a table default dollar use, you'll see that there are 1900, uh, sorry, 9,919 zeros. So one way to do this is let's just divide this by the sum of default. Um, actually, let's make it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this as my tab, and then if I just if I show you my tab, of course you get the same thing. So if I type my tab over the sum of my tab. Um, now I get the percentages. So you'll see that about 40% of the people have a down payment of zero. 
Uh, are men or women more likely to default? So give the default rates of each. So let's go do this. So if I, if I make a new object, my tab equal to table, so default dollar gender and default dollar default, that takes the value 0 or 1. If I show you what that looks like, I now have um, just a cross tabulation of the two. If I use prop.table, this is going to compute row percents. And you'll see that um, males have a default rate of about 12.97%. Females are slightly lower, about 10.42%. So which payment types are more likely to default? Support your answer with, uh, with an analysis. So the easiest way to do this is let's reuse our previous commands. I'm going to make this payment type and default, and then let's bring up that prop table. And what you'll see is there's a whole lot more variation across these payment types. 24% of the people who use book default, 16% who use statement default, whereas if you use one of these EFT methods, um, you, you're not likely to go away. So which uh, variable gender or payment type explains defaults better? Well, we see a whole lot more variation. So if I know that you're a book person, um, I, I, I'm, I'm much more certain about whether you're going to default than if you're a, an EFT person. Um, alternatively, knowing that you're male, male or female doesn't tell me that much, so the, the variation between these percents is much smaller than down here. Therefore, payment type is going to be a much better indicator of whether you're going to default. And um, that's it. That's it for this, this homework. It says be sure to save your session. So to save it, you're going to type Q parentheses, or you could say file exit also if you want. And I'll ask, do you want to save it? And I'll say, yes, please save it. And that's it for this homework.